<laughs> I need to be a millionaire before 40 uh, in dollars. That's not a source. Well, you can you can you see people that are so wealthy there. So what still happens? They still feel depressed. Right. So you can be a billionaire in before 40 and still be depressed. Everybody's welcome. Welcome, welcome everyone. How are you doing? <laughs> today I'm pumped because I have a surprise visitor today. <laughs> I thought we were going to meet on Zoom, but this guy just presented himself right here and live for every one of you. He is at your service. And as you can see the topic, we're not joking today, okay? We are talking about a controversial topic. What is depression? First of all, I'm going to greet you guys, okay? Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Wherever you are in the world, you are welcome to another live session with the DLBC Singles. We have singles and a couple of married people here on this group, and we talk about relationship from the Christian perspective. And today, we're not talking about marriage only. We also talk about self-development. We talk about your needs. We talk about your pains. We talk about um, job search and lots of things, okay? And that's why today we're here for this, this conversation. Today, we're talking about your need, your deepest needs that sometimes you don't want to talk about, you're ashamed to talk about. You don't know how to talk about, but today we're laying it out plain in the air. My name is Princess, Mrs. Princess, Sister Princess, however you want to address me. And I have Mr. David here. I have Madame Deborah Okoya right here. We're connecting to you from every different continent. And we are so delighted to be here with our guest, Mr. Olamide Omotosho in the house. I call him my psychologist. He is a registered provisional, provisional psychologist. When you say provisional psychologist, that means he's registered to practice in this province of Canada. Hmm. He's ready to even go and meet his patients this morning after this live. So, guys, you're getting this for free, okay? If you if you're going to go and say psychologist, you're going to pay money, money. Trust me, right? It's a lot of money. If you don't have insurance, maybe not a lot. You pay from it's pocket because I don't have money yet. No, yeah. he's pretending. Don't listen to him. <laughs> he doesn't want you guys to think that he's rich. But I see him in town. You guys rolling. <laughs> I don't know where he is on Facebook, but if you check him out, I see those pretty pictures. The guy is traveling the world, man. So he has been to different places. This man has lived in Brazil, right? Yeah, I moved from Brazil. He moved from Brazil yeah. and settled to Canada, finally, to stay here with his family. And we are going to be finding out if it is possible for a Christian to be depressed. So joining us today, as you can see, is my special guest here, and he'll be talking about depression as an aspect. So get your questions ready, okay? If you have any questions, you don't understand something, you have a friend that is going through some things that you don't understand. Now is the time to share this video to your friends, invite them to the table, and come with your questions, okay? Thank you for that. So uh, anybody wants to chime in and ask their own question? I have loads of questions, okay? So if you have a question... The question will be, what's depression? How do you describe this depression? Thank you. Very good question. Because that question actually is why most people would actually challenge what well, kind of person have depression, you know, that kind of stuff. So depression, you know, according to... I want to define it, you know, by um, professional definition. Yeah. psychological definition, which according to the American Psychiatric Association in their Diagnostic Statistical Manual, edition five, define depression as, you know, a mental health challenge. It's a mood disorder, right, that is characterized by, um, uh, what's it called, loss of interest, you know, uh, and a mood disorder. So it's a mood disorder, 
and loss of interest when it's been going on for over two weeks. So when we are, that, that needs to be very clearly defined. It's going on persistently for more than two weeks. So it's a mood disorder, not when you are, someone is sad because they lost a job. Someone is, you know, uh, emotionally down because they just lost a contract, for example. And after four or five days, like, oh, they move on. That I, right now, I feel so depressed. It's not something that is just transient, ephemeral, like in the moment, mm -hmm. you know, that's just a low mood. And we all, moods would always go up and down, right? But depression is a persistent, you know, mood disorder where the person, there's a constant feeling of sadness. Mm -hmm. And that sadness is very persistent, ongoing for more than two weeks and even more. And then loss of interest in activities or things that they would ordinarily like to do. And they just stop doing it. They just, you know, and it cuts across a whole lot of symptoms, emotional and cognitive symptoms and physical symptoms. Then it becomes so clear that, okay, something might be going on. And that's the time to speak up. That's how I can, you know, explain depression. Hmm. Okay, great. David, do you have a question? Oh, yeah. Um, wow. First of all, I just want to say you're very much welcome to this life. And uh, this is a topic that we've been really planning for a very long time, you know. And um, I think and it's hard to quite... get him. Exactly. It's very, very hard to get you. So <laughs> we're I've really, been really... for the past one year. Yeah. <laughs> we are really, really, really happy to have you here. Thanks for joining, giving us your time. Thank you. Um, you know, just because we have very, very limited time, I just want to go straight into the crust of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, you already defined depression. We all now agree that Christians can be depressed, right? So the first question I have is, is it... Um, is it that depression is something that we should expect to happen regularly? Um, because you said that, according to the definition, you said it's, it's a state that you are in probably for two weeks and you've not gotten out of it. So is it is it very, very possible that you we are experiencing depression at different levels regularly? And that's question number one. I want to pack it so that you can answer them okay. in one go so that uh, we save time. Um, then the other thing is, if it's an expectation that we get depressed regularly without us even recognizing it that much, then is there some form of uh, identifiers like we can point to to recognize that, okay, we are getting into that state and um, so that reason why I'm asking this is so that we don't let it to get into a chronic state. Right. Mm -hmm. So, because uh, I personally know a few friends that they keep telling me I'm depressed. I'm depressed. Me, I don't really understand it because <laughs> I'm kind of like, for me, I know I have a feeling where I'm down, but I, I have somehow found a way to get out of it. So I don't know why they keep saying that. That's why I'm like, um, I'm curious now, um, especially now for a Christian, because as Christians, we have uh, different outlets like prayer, uh, praise and worship, and all of those things, right? So how, how do we now... Um, identify these things and how do we deal with it before it get worse thank you very much uh, mr david so well to your first question the expectation that we're going to be having depression regularly is that the question and i want to be sure i'm getting it right so well actually the expectation lies in the fact that we there's so many things out of our control 
right? So when we set or have unrealistic expectations, you know, uh, we are bound as human beings to have, you know, disappointments, to have things out of our control. Like I said, like anything could happen, right? Job loss, um, death, and situational factors too, right? Things would happen. So there's so many things outside of our control as human beings, you know, even things that we can control sometimes. Also, when we have the observed, when it's different from what we expected, so there's a cross already. When you're observed, it's not aligning with what you have expected. You are bound to be down. You're bound to struggle. And that's what makes us human. So that expectation, it's not like you had it written all over you, like, oh, I'm expecting something's going to happen. You want to stay positive as an individual, you know, more so as a Christian, you know, you want to definitely bask in that I have God. I have someone who has everything under control. I don't have everything on, in, uh, under my control, but I have someone who does have as a father. And that is a different story too. It depends on your relationship with him for you to be able to say, I have someone who can give me this even if I don't have it. So that is very different. So because I believe the main crux of this conversation, this discussion is for us Christians, right? Because people, you know, when I mean who are not Christians who are not, and, and I, in fact, want to delve deeper into what we mean Christians, people who have a solid relationship with God, because anybody can be a Christian. Anybody, it's just a religion, right? But when we're talking about that Christianity, we're talking of people who really, like, I believe in God, I have a relationship with God, I can call God my father. That kind of, you know, Christianity is what we're actually talking about. So for that, yes. You can expect, you know, to have ups and downs. And you would have low moods. You would be discontent at some point. You would, you can never be happy 100% of the time. You are human, right? We carry flesh. Now, to your second question, what are those identifiers? Now, the problem is most people throw around this word, depression, I'm depressed, I'm this. Whereas it's just, you're just down, emotionally down. You're, and you're, oh, it's okay to be down for anybody. Now, before, it's a mental health pr um, problem. You know, before it becomes a mental health disorder, there's always a mental health problem. And that's where that identifier comes in. That's where we begin, like, what's going on? That's when we notice that, something might be more than just this, you know, you, you doubt. It's expected that when you, 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 you don't get, you know, a job, you don't get what you expect, and you're, you're not just going to be jumping around like, ah, so I lost that job. <laughs> or I lost that wife. You know, the person I proposed to. You know, or you yeah, have been, this is that just disappointed you, you know, that kind of stuff. me breakfast. <laughs> you know that kind of you no no one laughs around for things like that. People sisters get some breakfast too, you know. Really, of course, it, breakfast <laughs> is a, it's a compulsory meal now. <laughs> so if you're not having breakfast, we should even have questions. It is it is normal, right? That you get disappointed. I'm I'm, I'm sure we you, you pray for the will of God. Uh, the, well, not everyone has that story that this person and that's the person. Sometimes ah. Okay, I'll be allowed to, you know. Be around, be around, be around. You know, so <laughs> bring it for that relationship to one of these days. You know, so it does. I don't think anyone goes around just smiling. <laughs> that happened. You definitely will be knocked down for, you know, a day or two, depending on, you know, your person, your personality. That's a different story. We will also see some of the factors that can contribute to this dep depression. Mm -hmm. You know, genetic vulnerability, environmental factors. There are a lot of things that. You know, those are factors. We don't influence those factors, mm -hmm. right? For genetic, biological factors, for example. We don't, you don't determine those things, but that's another different. Um, <clears throat> so there are identifiers. So when we begin, and that's what we call those symptoms, right? Yeah. Symptoms, 
of depression are emotional, they are cognitive, they are physical. So you notice someone who's a Christian, all right, a friend, and this person is having constant thoughts of, you know, uh, they've been, they're mentioning things like, there are always markers, like, I don't think I can go on like this. Mm. You know, I can't take this anymore. Like, mm. they don't know exactly what they are trying. They don't have a plan, maybe suicide or something. They just, but those are markers that they are telling us. Those are identifiers, like, mm. you know, this, this is getting too much for me. It's got to end. Mm. Well, I don't know, what, what, what are you ending? You know, but those are things, those are times where we can chime in, like, okay, now, and some of the things you begin to see physical would be that fatigue. The loss so was Jesus body. depressed? Well, <laughs> you know, was, because he said, Father, <clears throat> this cup is too much. Jesus was only at that time. I wouldn't say Jesus was depressed. Jesus was okay. only stating the obvious. Yeah. That okay. cross That's was good. heavy. Yeah. And it's okay. So if Jesus at that time was like, man, he was emotionally down. He was like, wow, whoa, this is, of course, he was going to bear the, the sin of the whole world and all that. So it wasn't, I wouldn't say dep- if you remember that depression as a mood disorder is something that is persistent, yeah. you know? Okay. It, Can I argue? Sorry, sorry to interject. Please, uh, you're, not, you're not arguing. We, 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 we're learning. So, yeah, that is one of So, sure. So, uh, you know, if you if we really look at this this the story of Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, before he went to that point of saying, uh, "Father, this cross is too much," a yeah. series of things have happened. His best disciple betrayed him. Uh, a lot of things happened before that time. The Pharisees, everybody is onto him. So there was a series of events that happened for a while, and it was hitting him gradually right yeah until the point at which he had to just voice our father this cup is much so does that not classify jesus christ as depressed because it took him a while to actually like state the obvious and judging from what you said earlier you said you hear somebody saying constantly i'm tired i'm weary of this life i want to take it and all of that Mm -hmm. so it's kind of similar right so the thing when we're talking about Jesus, we need to understand that well, he came in the flesh, but he is not man. Let's be real. Jesus knew someone was going to betray him. Yeah. He knew. Right. Which we as humans, we're not privy to that information. Oh, something's going to happen. We just, we have worries. We ruminate, we worry, we have anxiety on what might happen, what might not. We then, blow things out of proportion, blah, blah, blah. That's a different story. But in the case of Jesus, he was very, very aware of what's going to happen. And that definitely, because when it comes to depression, right, Mm -hmm. we definitely will look at that. Your thoughts is the base, that the baseline for where depression, you know, comes from, right? What you think about would influence how you feel. And how you feel translates into the way you behave. So for Jesus, what do you think his thought process was? It was just the physical aspect of the cross he was going to carry. The Pharisees doing what they were doing, they have to do it. He knows they have to do it. If he wanted to like evade that cross, when he was being asked, would the people say you are Jews or something? I could free you right now. He wasn't, he wasn't looking because, no, you must not free me. I must die for the world. If you or I, as human, <laughs> man, that was the right time to just like, well, because he was a man. So we wouldn't say Jesus was depressed. He definitely, as human, as person in the flesh, the flesh wants relief mm-hmm. from stress. The flesh wants relief from pain. Yeah. So it was only fair that Jesus was like, and the other aspect of what we're going to be talking about as a Christian yeah. is Jesus, what? He prayed. Mm. That is, that's, that's, the, that's the thing that is different from people in the world. 
right, that we can hold on to. Yeah. Prayer. And you also mentioned it, prayer, music, you know, praise and worship and all those things. So, yeah, yeah those are... Uh, I think that's a good transition into the next question, which is, uh, you said uh, Jesus prayed and uh, even David prayed and the songs of Solomon and all of those things. But he was still downcast many a times with all his singing and all his praying and all of that. You're talking of David now? Yes, David. Okay. So um, how is that possible? Because David conquered a lot of battles, a lot of achievements. Why is he still feeling that way? Mm. So yes. Now, the reason why people still, despite trying to connect to God as a Christian, sing, pray, uh, you know, we, God is not, is a merciful God, right? Still, we can give many examples of why people, not all of our prayers, like you pray today and you get answers today, yeah. right? Because he knows best when to answer your prayers. In fact, he's answered most of our prayers. Let's be real. When we pray, we have a very right relationship with God. When we pray, what are we in, in, admonished to do? What are we enjoying to do? You believe that your prayer has been answered. Yeah. That's faith. Believe it's been answered. But doesn't mean the manifestation you see. Daniel prayed. His, his prayers was answered like right away. Mm -hmm. And the Prince of Persia what, stopped him. But if we had not remained persistent, that's one thing. And personally, I see God as, wow, you know, he doesn't struggle. He has given us that choice. That's something God does not struggle with us. Like, well, whether you believe it or not, it's your choice. You've asked for something, I've given it to you, right? It's only left for you to wait. And sometimes, you know, because we do not see what, and that's why faith is a very strong and very important component of our Christian faith, uh, our beliefs. You just must have, if you don't have faith, mm -hmm. because at the base of uh, depression, for example, is hopelessness. That's the, that's, the, that's the high despair, misery, hopelessness. Those are foundational, you know, marks for depression. That's like, yes. Now, at the base of that for a Christian is fear and lack of faith, mm. you know, because, and it's okay to be scared. It's okay to be, you know, like, I don't know it all. I, I'm, I'm done, right? Which is, that doesn't make you a sinner when you cry and, you know, voice your heart to God, like, God, ah, I'm dead though. Yeah, only you, you can say anything when you're with your father right mm -hmm. but we people put up show like um so strong and nothing that uh well they get hit the hardest actually yeah people who present like that like you know like oh trust me they get, because when you make yourself vulnerable of course to god mm -hmm. he sees you anyways whether or not you make <laughs> he knows what's going on in and out yeah. right but even as humans, as Christians, that part of, you know, that social connection, being able to, like, I'm going through a lot right now. I'm struggling, you know. Yeah. Ask it, and that know, would take us to that, that, would, that yeah, question. We'll get there. Yeah, but I know I've, I've, I've digressed from the, the, the question you asked. But the truth is, prayer, praise, and all those things, God knows best when he's going to answer our prayers. Yeah. You know, he knows when we need it. And that's why we hear that, you know, uh, you know, that course that like, uh, uh, God's time is the best, mm. right? It, it, it might sound like, oh, God's time is the best, but truly, his time is the best. Yeah. It's, it's never late. Mm -hmm. Only we set timelines, but God is never late. That's the thing we need to understand. But as humans, we have expectations. We have timelines we have things so when we pray we expect to see that result immediately mm -hmm. right so for david who yeah he went through a lot he sang he, but then his enemies too ah oh, you've sang <laughs> we'll stop following you 
David didn't, they were want to kill you. They were following they him. They kept following him. Yeah. So his problems was like, it's not like, ah, oh, you sang now, oh, and my problems are over. And let's not also forget that even then too, you know, God is merciful. But when we do things, human beings, we always want to evade or avoid consequences. Yeah. God told David, for this thing you have done, no, so we never see in your house. Mm. You've done some things. I will forgive you. But then, you, you know, okay, fine. So that's why no matter how ardent you are as a sinner or whatever, God is willing to forgive. He will forgive. He will, of course, he hates sin but doesn't hate you. So come. But then you won't say because he has forgiven you. And you have stolen or you have embezzled money from one place, they go come carry you. They, you, you, you. You have to, yeah, and that is where, as a Christian, you must now enjoy that suffering. The consequence of, the your, consequence actions. of your action. But it's tough. It's tough. I prayed now. So God cannot remove this thing. Mm -hmm. eh? So He cannot just erase everything. And if people say there's God, whatever. That's it. so <laughs> it is just um like that. And yes, we pray, but we. As a Christian, you have to just believe I've prayed. I will stop praying mm -hmm. until I testify, until my testimony does manifest. Okay. So, yeah. That takes me to that question. Let's talk about the stigma around mental health in Christian community. Now, depression or mental health, however you say, in mm -hmm. Christian community, how do you like see it? You know, how <clears throat> now this, some people call it positive toxicity. Toxicity. Yeah. of saying, oh, you can't be depressed. Ah, you, you're not a Christian. If you're, you're depressed, how can you be? That means you don't have faith. That means you, you know, you, you're not, you, you, you don't pray enough and all that. So how do you, that stigma, people, some people are ashamed to express their depression mm -hmm. and they sometimes isolate. They sometimes pretend to be happy, put up that fake smile and try to say everything is all right. But when they're in private, they are crying. They are everywhere. It's dark. They are. They are really, you know, at that point where it's like they are drowning. So, how do you? Can you explain a little about that stigma? About, about when, I, when I say mental health, of course, when some Christians and some Africans hear that mental health, they're like, "Oh, madness!" But mental health is not about madness, right? Mm -hmm. Depression is happening in the head, so it's mental, right? It's not physical. My hand hurts or uh, anything. Can, can translate into other things, but it's something, it's a dysfunctionality that happens in the head. Mm. So can you shed some light about that? Yeah, sure. And uh, it's, you know, interesting when you say that, uh, that I work with a, I work with diverse population with different, you know, uh, not too many Christians I see, yeah. uh, for sure. And, um, and when it comes to African men, worse. you know, it is worse. Uh, <laughs> Of course, even though um, Caucasians to men too, like, but do you know that according to uh, statistics, men die more by suicide, for example, than women. Yeah. Well, women attempt suicide more than men. But they don't die. <laughs> well, <laughs> some, do. With it. <laughs> some do, but men die more because they do not talk. They just, they keep quiet, like, mm. you know, for that shame, masculine, um, toxic, Toxic masculinity, that kind of, no, uh, why would a man cry? That kind of. So we, as Christians, remember, we are all humans, first of all, to answer your question. Yeah. And try to like pretend that because you are a Christian, you become a superhuman. Is, that is fallacy. You, are, you have already, you, you are you deceiving yourself, actually, mm -hmm. right? And that is not even what God that's why that place there. Ah, okay. Do not forsake the gathering. It's not only when you go to church, and all of us we are singing him, or we are, you know, you are coming together, sharing of bread. You are, you know, admonishing one another. Yeah. It's not only like yeah, we are preaching Bible. Yeah, you read the Bible. You use the Bible to, you know, encourage one another. Because nothing we want to talk about in this world that has, or that can be outside of the Bible. Hmm. everything that can ever happen or will happen is in the Bible. That's what makes it a perfect book, right? Yeah, yeah. So there are people there. Can we all be more, um, how do you call it, righteous, if I want to use that word, 
colder than the than Jubu. Mm. Or Elijah that called down fire. Yeah. That and on that Jesse Bess, if I catch you <laughs> and it, and it, and it ran. I was like, God, I want to die there. Why did like that is you know? Yeah. But some do you know some Christians in some circles are gonna say that your examples of uh stating that Job was depressed mm-hmm. uh is heretical <laughs> or what have you, you know? Mm-hmm. So how uh, can you put into Dosifo as a psychologist mm-hmm. uh, clinically? What are those things you saw in scriptures and the life of Job, in the life of um, yeah. in the life of Solomon uh, and David that proves to you that they were depressed? That allows you to categorize. Um, what happened as depression mm-hmm. and that as Christians they can be able to say okay when they see such kind of things it means that okay I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing what David experienced or I'm experiencing what Job experienced and of course I can go to God to ask him to help me out but to be able to recognize and not be ashamed of saying that I was depressed or I'm depressed Okay, thank you. But there are some people that are going to listen to this live session. Though. And some of them are going to say, ah, this, they are bringing in strange fire. Children of, children of God cannot be depressed. You know? Yeah, In some of our circles, they are going to say, children of God cannot be depressed. It's a lie. Okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as a result, a lot of, a lot of things <laughs> are happening. People are sick. And sometimes also when such kind of things happen, um, they describe it as diabolical, it's the devil or what? Yes, I don't know. But there is, is there, no, a, there is a difference between what's happening in your body and what the devil is causing. Yeah, some people are going to say everything that happens in the physical starts from the spiritual or what have you. Yeah. But is, is it the devil that makes you tired? I don't know. You know, well, uh, so yeah, let's 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 take it one at a time, like you said. That thank you so much for for that. Um, so the the first question about let's talk about that um, a clinical definition of depression. Like I said earlier, and I will go back to that is we humans, human beings. As long as you are human, and you went through the same process of conception until birth mm-hmm. right there are things that are in that process for example out of your control you know depression some people are more susceptible to being depressed than others right so uh, that is a genetic vulnerability so people who have um fasd fetal alcohol syndrome disorder this whole lot of those things trauma, we will not go into that. Sexual, no trauma. Well, trauma for 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 a trauma that um, for someone who's experienced it, but some kind of prenatal trauma as well. That but that is not even very evident. Like you know, it's still being proven and all that. But mm-hmm. for someone to say that, well, how would you say I'm depressed as a Christian? You can never be depressed. I say to them that they only need to read their Bibles well. Now, being more specific, if you say Job, Job was everything right with God. He was okay. In fact, had to get permission from God, the devil, to you know punish him and all that. Mm. But Job did not see all those things. We are only reading it in the Bible because that's what. So we'll focus on what Job went through to answer that question. Mm. Job by definition of depression was, he wasn't happy. He was sad. He was having, uh, I mean, it was having sadness for a persistent period of time. Over how many chapters? It was persistent. It was something that was for so long. Name it, he lost uh, children, everything, physical uh, pain, sickness, all of those things. So you're not going to tell me that he was happy having those boils. 
having those things. He was in pain. Mm -hmm. And he was challenged to even cause God. His friends, yeah, we saw all of those things. So when he was doing those things, please tell me, we did not read the account of Job that before those things happened, this was what Job did. He was always going to, you know, meetings and all that. We didn't have that account. And we're not going to add to that because that's not our job. But of course, because of that physical pain and all those things he had, mm -hmm. he was just laying down somewhere, just sitting down. Just It was, you know, like a leprous person. They just left him there. The wife came, cause God and God go. go. <laughs> this thing is too much, you know? Mm -hmm. So he had he went through all of those things for a persistent period of time mm -hmm. and that is by definition what depression is his mood was down and we saw the account like that in job 30 to like it in some versions not in king james but in some versions like new it called it depression mm -hmm. it was there like <laughs> i'm depressed oh god like what is what is going on you know so yes mm -hmm. yeah now for David as well, you know, all the time when he had to struggle with Absalom, his, his son, over more than two, three chapters as well. The Bible didn't tell us it was a week or two weeks. Yes, no. But if you're a good reader of the Bible, for all of us, you know that these events are months and years of like the, uh, you know, and it was constantly, he had to, oh, he just, David had nothing. That's just one example. He had no other prayer than to pray that, oh God, turn the wiseness of Aitofel to foolishness. Mm -hmm. Because if Aitofel remained with Absalom, he was going to kill David. Was he, there was no way. Yeah. And it was even by divine revelation that God gave him that kind of prayer mm -hmm. to make that kind of prayer. But if he was still saying, oh Lord, Absalom, something, something, he will kill him and nothing's going to happen. But he was able to pray that prayer that turned that guy's wisdom to foolishness. And you can see what happened too. He didn't listen. He, I had to be like, ah, ah, even your father, I can't talk to him and not listen. You, I'm telling you something. And he went to kill himself. Yeah. You know, that's so. And at the end of the day, David became uh, victorious. victorious over that situation. Mm. <laughs> right. But like we said, we actually, as human beings, forget that we have a past too, right? And we praying does not just take away consequences or natural consequences that would happen, right? Yeah. So it's now how you react to those things. So people in the Bible definitely have been depressed yeah. for a period of time. Naomi was depressed. She lost everything in like one day, husband, sons, and, you know, it took a while for her before Ruth was able to, you know, help, you know, how to come out of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But also what we as Christians feel sometimes, some people or those people that continue to argue, and it's okay because, yes, they know that you cannot, you, you, they, they say that because they, 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 they think that the God we all serve does magic. You know, if you just talk to him, it just takes everything away. And we started off this uh, topic by, can a Christian be depressed? Yes, because if you can fall sick, mm. physical sickness, then please tell me that you don't have a, 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 a you, you, you are not a combination or composition of mental and physical health. That No, I'm just physical. I'm just physical. But you fall sick. Uh, yeah. If you fall sick uh, and you, when you are disappointed, they said they want to tell me at some point in their life, they're not, ah, I'm just tired. Or I don't I don't know or whatever. And like you rightly not asked too, you know, can a Christian be, uh, um, you know, why, do you, why are you tired? Or before that, you mentioned being diabolical. The truth also is, yes, it could be so. The Bible really, it was tormented. Who was tormented? God tormented him. Like the evil spirits. Evil spirits tormented him. Don't get me wrong. But God permitted that to happen to him. God left him. God left him because God has already left him. That's why. And that's why you don't that's he why left him. Another spirit came. Another spirit came because there must there be a... something that must occupy that space. <laughs> exactly. Mm. So 
But what too, if you now look at it, because God is still merciful too, mm. like David, he, he knew, and that's the power of music. Mm. God sings song for me now. Yeah. Whenever he sings, that spirit left, left him. Yeah. So, evil spirits. The power of good music, Christian music. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, because there's some music that, of yeah. course, because David I, sang to the Lord all the time, it, it, most of the time. Yes, so the it, songs, it, 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 the songs, it have been playing for thank Saul. You, thank you for that. Yes, that was help because you need to, it's not just, you know, songs that would lift your soul, that would, you know, draw you nearer to God in that moment, because that's all you've got yeah. in that moment, in that moment, because you're trying to figure out what can I do? What's what next? Mm -hmm. And you, 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 if you knew the answer in the first place, you probably won't be de 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 depressed. Yeah. <laughs> Only God has the answer for that. So one can be, and maybe that's why some of them, like it can be. And that's why we want to, as Christians, always like, okay, you draw near to God and not put up all this holier than thou kind of, yeah. I'm so holy. Uh, we don't see our pastors, the, the general superintendent, the general overseers, and all these people. They take care of themselves. Though. They take good care of themselves. Trust me. If you go on uh, uh, 40 days fasting, or until you will collapse. Because for them, when they fasting, when they would break that fast, for example, they will eat balanced diets. Yeah. But you, you are not, you say you're a Christian, you are not eating balanced diet, you're not this thing, you will, your body will lose nutrients. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you begin to <laughs> begin to misbehave <laughs> because you are not eating well, you are not sleeping, you are not the, the body, you 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 cannot, you are not a machine, you are not a robot, you know, yeah. you are flesh and blood. So there are certain things that we need to understand. That you, and if we don't, you know, you definitely would experience. The, and remember, before it becomes a disorder, because people forget that too. Yeah. That when you are just low, you are down right now. I'm not happy. I'm sad. Oh, you are depressed. Uh, maybe that's what they mean by I can never be depressed, mm. right? Because of course, that's not depression. Yeah. You just that's a low mood state that you are in. You're not just happy. Things are not going well. Yeah, nobody is happy. So they say I can't be. Deep. But before it becomes a disorder, is when it has been left for so long as a result of maybe traumatic events, you know, death in the family, those things. Of course, it's definitely going to be for a long period, you know, depending on how quick. No matter how you. So that's how uh, manage how, how you manage. Yeah. It. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, I think we are almost, think, yes, it's well, almost it's, time for you to go. Yes, David, go, go, go for it. I know it's almost time for you to go, but uh, I just want to ask this question about PTSD. Okay. Um, so what's the full name for PTSD? Post-traumatic stress disorder. Stress disorder. Yeah. Post-traumatic yeah. stress disorder. Okay. Stress disorder. So the <clears throat> reason why I'm asking this question is because it's very, very, very common for people to have some sort of like dark experience when they're young and it lingers in, in towards uh, their adulthood, right? It could be anything. Well, let's just take, for example, one area <clears throat> um, and which is very, very common in the context of marriage. Uh, rape, grape, let me see just grape so that <laughs> but you understand what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. in the case of grape, uh, a lot of Christians, in fact, they don't address it, and um, it lingers even to the point of them getting married, and they don't even know how to speak to their husband or their wife about it. So, what would you advise is uh, as a professional? For Christians, like I want you to tell her like a simple but effective solution for Christian believers to take uh, that can help them gradually manage, if not overcome it. I know that there is prayer, but I'm, I'm also setting uh, the other aspect of it, like the 
yeah, scientific tooth, part tooth, of it. Yeah. Tooth, yeah. Yeah, to be honest, uh, I'll start off with, uh, well, you know there's prayer. Let's be real. It, everything is not, prayer is everything and prayer is not everything. <laughs> if, if, if that makes sense in the sense that yes you pray what god will do you know man will not do mm -hmm. right and what man is expected to do god will look at you until you do what you're meant to do if you're meant to take care of yourself you're meant to you know it is like okay um, you have that choice so it's good to pray like you said but we are talking of solutions that you can do practically Right. So in when we talk about grape, that is a very, very uh you know, it's a very common, you know, aspect of trauma that uh, people experience. Now, as Christians, we are gonna be look looking at it from the angle of that uh cultural uh because not just religion now, uh, as our as as uh, our faith as a Christian, right? Because uh, as it before you became a Christian, you were actually first from a community from somewhere, right? Where people were like, oh, we don't say this environmental factors. So if you want to slash environmental, stroke cultural, you don't because of what guilt, shame, shaming actually is the most important, is the major one, and it's psychological because if you say that, you won't get married, dude. You won't get married if you say that. That's you are done. So you shut up. But so, and if you look at it too, you we, we can't fully blame them. It's that stigma around it as well. Yeah. And people begin to then jump to conclusions. Where were you? How were you dressing? If you had dressed well, this would not have happened. Where did you go? You, whatever. So people want to avoid all those kind of questions. Mm. And you're just like, it's better to just keep quiet. Yeah. But then definitely that trauma because trauma can be there for years if if you don't treat it if it's not addressed it's going to be there it doesn't just go away on its own mm. so it happens to men too oh yeah absolutely yeah. of course right so now in terms of you only need to be seeking spiritual help i mean uh psychological help because it's a psychological problem and not thinking a prayer. Prayer, you, it's a combination. You pray, of course, as a Christian, whether or not you pray for everything in your life. Yeah. You don't just, uh, hey, you wake up every day, you do your devotion, you pray. And you, your life is part of your prayer, everything. But what are those steps, right? So you have to seek counseling, you know, therapy, if you, you know, you can specify and be more, you know, be more specific, you know, uh, whom you see. Uh, you look maybe a Christian, a counselor or a psychologist, or that would understand, but you need to be talking to somebody who is unbiased. That's that's number one, actually. Yeah. First thing is to acknowledge that you have this problem. Mm -hmm. Most, the commonest problem I see with us Christians is not acknowledging mm -hmm. that we have this problem. And when you don't acknowledge, trust me, you can even go see somebody. They're going to talk from now to tomorrow. <laughs> That's true. You're not going to listen. And the psychologist or even the pastor cannot change you mm -hmm. because you already have a pre-conceived idea that and disposition. Of course, that idea would then influence how you behave, how you react to it. So you must first acknowledge. And that's why even when we want to repent too, the first thing is to acknowledge. You must acknowledge your sins. Yeah. Before you, if you don't acknowledge that you are a sinner, you can't repent. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. So it, these things are just universal principles mm -hmm. that acknowledge that I have a problem. Yeah. And I need help. And I need help. And that can be, can serve as the base for which, you know, you have a problem. I need help. Okay. Where do I get this help? Who will be the right person to talk to? Yeah. Right? Yes, we understand because of the stigma around it. It's and even if not stigma, it's not a comfortable conversation to have. Like, hey, guess what? Do when I was, <laughs> it's not something comfortable talking about. Yeah. Not only because of 
you know, the pain that you are going to be replaying, you don't want to get re-traumatized, yeah. you know, but the fact that um, even talking about that alone, you're not sure, maybe the person you tell it, you are dumping on the person. Yeah. You know, it's just like you, you, you tell somebody, hey, see what's going through, and they open kind of worms, and, and you can't close it back. Yeah. That become that's even that's another problem. So that might be oh, whom am I talking to? Mm. Am I talking to the right person? So those things we need to. But the first thing to answer that because our, in terms of solutions, mm -hmm. honestly, there are going to be approaches, mm. you know, cognitive behavior approaches, cognitive processing approaches, EMDR, eye movement desensitization, reprocessing therapy, but all those things. You can only do that in the counseling room, yeah. but you need to be talking to somebody. So I think for us as a Christian, the first thing is to acknowledge that this is a problem mm -hmm. and let us move away from this idea that, hmm, well, God will solve it. No, God will not do magic. God doesn't do magic. Christians, most people, not every Christian, but some Christians that are on not being sincere, or maybe I don't know how we all interpret these things differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We read the same Bible, we interpret different things. Go and help us. Yeah. Is Christians that are not open, mm. and that is it. Rigidity is not because of the Bible you are reading, no. it's mm. your personality. It is your personality, it is already what you are bringing into your before you became born again. Mm. You, you see, maybe you see some pastors that are very, very jovial and you know and they are good pastors but look if you look back at their life before they became christian they must be maybe jovial people mm -hmm. and they bring that into but definitely in a christian way but you see people that are like serious like my own father and the lord now pastor kumo you know pastor is not the when even where i'm i don't know him of course when they bomb me but you you can just like hmm, it's a college. this man is his book, he will, be, he will be so serious, <laughs> you know? But yeah, he's not, of course, doesn't mean he doesn't smile. That's you know, but you know, like, Baba is, uh, hey, he go, you bring that thing into your personality before it's you so became a Christian, 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 before you be. So people that are ah, very rigid in their thinking, they already have that rigidity in them yeah. before they became a Christian. Mm -hmm. They are now just using the Bible so uh, and carrying and doing like this is it's is that is not so mm -hmm. God help us, but that's a personality uh kind of so we need to be open-minded. Those are these very basic steps: open-mindedness, acknowledging that this is a problem, yeah. and seeking help the right way, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Not just um, because when we talk about even approaches, psychological approaches. We use eclectic approach. It's not just one approach. Oh, I want to use cognitive behavior therapy. Uh, no, you use multiple approach because we can't use one cap. Fits everybody. Everyone is different. I might try an approach with you. It doesn't work. Well, okay, you know what? Maybe we'll try this. Mm. You know. So as a Christian, what I would say is the leverage, the advantage we have is that prayer mm. is the fact that we can go to God. So as a Christian who's depressed, I can, or who's traumatized, I can talk to God about my trauma. I can talk to God about my depression that, oh, so while I'm working at it from what I can control, you know, I'm trying to seek help, talking to the right people, getting help, I'm also praying. I stand a better chance to come out of it quicker than someone who doesn't have God, who doesn't trust that, believe that. They just feel that everything, it's all down to me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can do this. Because let's be real, even those that are not Christians, they believe, I, I see people every day. I see, <laughs> some, of course, they don't believe in God. Yeah. And they seek counseling and they get okay. Right. Because really, it's what, how, it's, I'm not pretending it's easy, yeah. but it's doable. Yeah. That I can tell you 100%. Mm. It, you just have to be consistent and people can be consistent. And the more you begin to do these things, it becomes factual that, oh, I did this. 
they set realistic Little goals steps. and those yeah. baby steps, you mm -hmm. know, they make a plan, they start small before you know it. Wow. How do people, people who are sober, like from substance use, yeah. did they pray to God? All of them, they pray, oh God, uh, take away this alcoholism for me. No. They just, they don't know what they They just know. And they'll tell you, I've been sober now for 10 years. Yeah. They do it with, with their power now. So if they can do that. And tools. And tools that are built. Yeah. So yeah. we as Christians, we definitely have more advantage because then we are not doing it by our own power. We're not doing it alone. Right. God. But to yeah. think it's God that will come and take it away. Or it's God that we do. It's not God that put it there in the first place. Mm -hmm. So... You will have to, you that put it there, or situation that put it there, mm -hmm. okay? We now have to, but God can help us figure out a way to get out of, to it. Get out of it. With so, the right tools. With the right tools, obviously. Mr. David has a question. I'm yeah, last, last, last question. So I just um, want to now talk about the people that are closest to uh the people that are experiencing depression say for example you're married and then your partner is depressed mm -hmm. what is the best approach to not worsen the situation as a partner like how can you help them help themselves since okay. you cannot actually help them right how do you help them help themselves because well i'm just asking this because i have experience with that like some friends they get depressed and then i keep saying how are you depressed i don't know the right things to say to <laughs> help them because for me it's, it's something that i get out of easily like so um i just want a bit of advice on that. yeah thank you very much that's a very good question so honestly you want to just stay present yeah. uh, you just want to be very first thing is to if you don't understand the problem if you don't understand what depression is, that's why we need to educate ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Now, I'm sure that you're leaving this, you know, um, chat, this conversation, kind of like, okay, maybe what you're having is just a low mood. Now you can at least differentiate that you're not having a, this is not depression because, because of this that happened, I know you. Mm -hmm. Because of this disappointment right now, it's okay to be sad. I know, but you have a plan. What's the next thing? And like, uh, yeah, just give me. And by the next maybe two, three days, they out of it, right? Or they're not because of that. I'm not going to shower. Personal care takes a hit. Mm -hmm. They don't, you know, or now they're just binge watching on TV. They eat too much, sleep too much, or, and that has been like, very becoming very repeated, very consistent. Mm -hmm. So somebody who says I'm depressed, but ah, well, God, give me a bad job, and it it, <laughs> it whacked the whole thing. <laughs> you just said the person is okay. You, well, you, 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 <laughs> you know, of course. So now you can like differentiate. <laughs> so that's the very front end. Mm -hmm. You you cannot help the blind cannot lead the blind kind of so you definitely need to first yourself understand like this is what is happening mm -hmm. then you begin now to see those symptoms you're being like hey they're having this persistent thoughts negative thoughts of you know even if they are not expressly saying talking about suicide but then self-harm in some ways you, you know you see those things sadness despair very consistent you're mm -hmm. seeing that um you know uh, they want to stay in the dark they just the want time. to isolate themselves yeah. you know, and that is ongoing then behaviorally you can see that tired loss of interest no motivation yeah. you go to work no i don't i'm not going mm -hmm. it's not just i don't feel like going they do not go for example yeah. they just sit home mm -hmm. guy somebody who loves to like go watch or play soccer or something now like not interested that loss of interest constantly for that period of time that is ongoing you can then oh so when you begin to notice these things it's okay to like this is what i'm noticing yeah. they are doing it and not really noticing what they are doing it's just that's what depression is about mm. you know that loss you lose interest in everything you 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 just tired, fatigue, and yeah. all that sleepy, too, sleepiness, sleeping too much, eating too much, or more or less. Yeah. So 
when you begin to see those things, like this is what I'm noticing. Yeah. I think you. So it's you now directing them to get that help yeah. because you know that you're not trained to. But it's okay to listen, active listening, right? We get so motivated, especially those things like ah, this is what you are going through. Hey, <laughs> this is, and then we begin to talk, 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 Make talk, talk, worse. talk. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we should do more listening. Like, yeah. tell me, you know, and if they're not ready to talk, like your spouse or something, yeah. you don't push. You just mm -hmm. stay present. Just know that if you need to talk to someone, I'm here. you know, I'm here to listen, you know, and I promise I'm not going to judge you. Yeah. Just, just, Very important. you know, I'm not also promising I'm going to help you. I'll fix your problem, you know, but maybe we need to be talking to somebody. Right. Encourage them. You know, encourage them to, you know, speak and give them time. Mm -hmm. You know, because we get like talk now. Well, me, I'll go. No, no time. And you move on. <laughs> you know, you know, we do we do those things a lot. So yeah, guy, we have to give time. You, yeah. you know, it's okay to time out. I've been trying to talk to you. It's not, oh, I'll come back. You know, just keep checking in stay present because you can be present and not present because you are physically in the room doesn't mean you are there yeah you know with the person mm -hmm. so it's just been i am here for real talk to me and I they will know if you are there and they will know of course you, we are humans so if you, someone's listening to me actively like right? mm -hmm. i'm listening I, i'm i'm you know, and i'm listening mm -hmm. and you are talking you are writing you are doing it and you're watching and you're, your phone so keep talking, keep talking. Yeah, you know, those keep things. Talking. Yeah, of course, the person just... Let me, uh, what did you say? I'm just keep talking. In fact, you might even hear what the but you, of course, want to like... That's also part of that empathy, right? Mm -hmm. You want to put yourself in that person's shoes. You want to listen. So active listening, those are ways we can help. Listening, learn to listen more than you are so eager to speak. Yeah. You know, and then just be present physically, and that's how we get, you know, so that effective communication too. And in fact, when they get to begin speaking, yeah. you're able to like, oh, okay, I think this might be okay. maybe just a mood mm. kind of for right now. Because that because that you can, you know, so just like, okay. And then direct them towards where they can get the help. Okay. Yeah. So me, I just have one or two things to add that people should not shame others. Mm -hmm. If you know someone who is depressed, don't shame them. Some people don't come out to talk because they are being shamed. Mm -hmm. So uh, somebody commented, and I want to uh, I want to just share the last line of her comment, and her name is uh, Joyce Sarkodi. She said, she said a lot of things which we've already talked about, about depression and Elijah and all that. And she said, I think depression thrives in secrecy. We need to share our problems with people who are empathetic. So those are very important points. People who are empathetic, not people that, that pity you, not people who just pity you. And if you pity someone who's depressed, they kind of want to shut off because they don't want to be pitied. They actually want somebody to listen to them. They're actually looking for help when they come to talk to you. So empathy, empathetic, who will listen to us and be able to assist us. So um, that's, that's very important. Thank you very much, uh, Joy. Uh, and then... For those who are feeling uh, depressed and they feel, oh, maybe I'm broken, maybe I'm dysfunctional. Many of them, many people feel that they are broken because they're depressed. I just want you to know that you are not broken. You're not weak because you feel depressed. It's just a state that, um, that happens to you and you can actually get out of it if you follow the tools that uh, Mr. Olamide has given to us here. And if you find yourself just trying to be accepted by people, especially those who are trying to get a relationship and you are trying to please everybody, you know, you're, you're forgetting yourself, you're losing yourself and you're trying to put on another person's skin because you want to be accepted by, by people because you feel that you're not enough and that people might not want to accept you the way you are. Mm -hmm. That could be a sign of someone that is dealing with something deeper. Like, you know, that's, 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 that's also self-esteem. Uh, exactly. Uh, because I think uh, that's another uh, topic for, I think, another day. Yeah, we're going to come back. Self-esteem and, yeah. um, you know, Christianity. That because also come from many things. Oh, yeah. Yes. So have been bullied by their mom saying, you won't get anybody to you. You're not so pretty. You're not so pretty. 
married this black face. Yeah, so nobody that, married this, uh, this nose. Nobody will marry this short person. Body. You know, all those kind of body shaming. Yeah, yeah, those can also create yeah, it in the, in the future. So those are some of the things that, sure. that I had here. And mm-hmm. also in church, many times we gaslight those people. You know, we gaslight them. We make them feel like, you know, Jesus, Jesus is your counselor. I don't, Jesus will counsel you. You don't need help. Stop going up and down to unbelievers to get counsel from unbelievers. Hey, go to your leaders. No, let's not gaslight them. That's something you should never do. Don't gaslight them. Listen to their problem. Listen to their pain. And then if you cannot help, keep quiet. If you cannot help people, keep quiet. Just listen to them and then cause more harm. Then cause more harm. Don't destroy, further destroy them. Just keep quiet. And if you can't leave them, just say, okay, you know what? I'll pray along with you. Hold hands with them, pray with them, and leave it at that. Let God take, take care of the rest. But if you can help them, direct them to the right person to help, to help them. So don't mind the stigma. Don't try to stay there in your shame, in your secrecy, but confide in people who are willing to, to help you. So if you feel these symptoms, heaviness, despair, numbness, sadness, anxiety, overwhelmed feelings of not loved all the time and loss of appetite, loss of desire, those are the symptoms, right? Yeah. And then you don't want to do anything. You are mad at everything for no reason. You are frustrated. Everything is working out for you. One of my friends said, I don't understand. Everything is working out for me, but I'm depressed. I don't get it. I have a house. I have a good job. I have a good car. We just bought a a new house. Everything is just fine, but I am down. I'm depressed. I I just don't get it. That is depression. Okay. Because I was listening to somebody who said (laughs) that if everything is working out for you and you are feeling awful, that's depression. That's a sign of depression. It's not just my life is just shitty. Everything is just shitty around me. Everything is not good. Everything is not this. And so I'm depressed. No, that's not depression. He has rightly said already. So we have a lot of people or our Bible scholars. We have people that you can study who have gone through depression. We have Job. We have Jeremiah. We have Naomi. Uh, you, we know about Naomi. We have Jonah. You remember when he sat under that tree mm-hmm. and he said, mm-hmm. why did you save Nineveh? Now, I'm going to sit outside the city. I'm upset. I'm sad. I'm mad because of what they do. It's it post-traumatic disorder that led to that. He was not happy. He had the disorder of what those people had done to the Israelites, right? And he didn't want to help those people. And then he went there and he sat there under the tree. God gave him shelter. God wanted to prove a point to him. And all of a sudden, the shelter was gone. I was like, oh no, I just want to end it all. He wanted to end it all. But God taught him a lesson. Go and read it to know more about it. So Jonah went through it. David went through it. Elijah went through it in 1 Kings chapter 18 and chapter 19. Read it how Elijah thought he was all alone. Most people de- feeling depressed feel I'm all alone. Only me is going through this thing. Nobody else. I'm, I'm in a hole right now. But you're not in a hole. Elijah thought like that. And God told him there are a host of people, prophets that are following him. And that his life, it should not be like that. So read that one. And so God gave Elijah some solutions. He said, eat. That that angel came to him and said, eat, rest, and be refreshed because the journey is long. So please eat, stand up from your depression, eat, rest, have a bath, pull out the curtain, let some fresh light come into the house. You change, open the windows, let the air change. Yeah, yeah. Those, like, those, 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 those things, we those. call them behavioral activation, for example. So those are very specific uh, things that we can do. So we because with depression, yes, you that's want to stay in that darkness, like, you want uh, to stay there, uh, and everything. One of uh, yeah, that just it's I mean, secrecy. Yeah. Well, secrecy, but maybe may I'll say more of an isolation. Exactly. You just want to be because it's not secret because people, you you can't hide it. People yeah. know, like okay, you can't be suffering inside the body. That's what's going on in your head. Yeah. But in terms of that disposition, people would see that this person. You look unkempt. You look. Uh, mm-hmm. Tattered, you're not taking care of yourself, yeah, you're yeah. locked up indoors. So with behavioral activation, those are some of the things we will talk about in session. That yeah. You try to, you know, let a person like just getting your body moving mm-hmm. is a way to start challenging it. Yeah. Right. So That's if exercises, 
you know, even responsibilities at home. Yeah. Your room looks all like, you know, well, tired. Get out. So many if you can just, you know, I'm going to sort out my wardrobe today. I'm telling you, that's you one know, thing. You guys listen to just, this part. You know, just sorting out your clothes, just get busy doing yeah. something. Yeah. But also, people who are depressed, struggle with depression, we need to say that too. It's not easy finding the motivation to do those things. It's yeah. like, seem easy, like, just arrange your stuff. It's not easy to be yeah, honest. Yeah, very yeah. difficult. So you Little have to start small, small. You know, progress. Start, yeah, right. To start small. If it's yeah. just, you know, I'm going to take all the shoes out today. Just take all the shoes out. Yeah. Right. Just put it out. Then tomorrow I will just do this part of the closet. Mm. Boom. Right. Yeah. If it's for exercise, ah, man, to go to the gym, ah, it's far. Don't even take a walk. Just. Your in fact, if you cannot walk in your neighborhood, you can run in the, on the spot in, in your, your house, house right? right? You can just put the YouTube videos and just do, you walk for 30 minutes before you know it. Oh, you feel good. It's yeah. going to feel like, a, you know, it could be hmm. cooking. Be little yeah. little. So just this little, little thing. You know, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but I, I, I'm just motivated to say that. So those are things that just have to get ourselves yeah. with little by little, make a plan. And if it helps, find a buddy, you know, a buddy that can yeah. someone that can do it you know, with you, that can partner. do with you or help you, like, mm. hey, have you done this? You said you were gonna do this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Finding someone that can mm-hmm. help you, remind you, set a timer. Those mm-hmm. are things that we can do. So, yeah. yeah. Then stay away from negative people, okay? If there's someone that always, anytime you talk to him, you go. Anytime you talk to her, you, you, to her, you go. Yeah, be anybody. That's, that's very true. It could even be someone very close to you, your mother, your friend. Don't the entertain moment. those people. Cut off from them, run away from them for your mental health. I think that's all. There's a lot of things to say. Don't compare yourself with anybody. Somebody on Facebook, they're making it, they're driving big cars, Range Rover. Don't look at it. Drive your Honda, your car with pride. Don't co- when you compare yourself to others, it will just make you feel your life is yeah. your life is not that. You don't have a car. Be grateful yeah, about it. Let's, him let's let our guest so, go. We're going to let him go. Everyone. If you have been blessed by this, my friends, please, please, please share this video with your friends. Put your comments. And what do you want to say to Mr. Olamide, who has sacrificed his time? I want to say a big thank you for thank your you. time. And I hope we'll catch you again. You catch me. Part again. two. I enjoy it. We, we, we need a part two because definitely there are some sure. other areas we will dive into. Okay. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, have a goodbye. Best weekend. Thank you so, so much. So bye everyone. Thank you bye so bye. much for hanging out with us. We're gonna put this an end to this live today because our host has to go and I have to see him off to the door. Okay. See you guys next bye. week. Bye. Uh, if we don't have any program, so we'll see you at next week, same place, same time. Until that time, bye. Bye. bye.